What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are going to talk about the Star Monarch job for the Taekwon job class. In my previous video, I've already discussed the Taekwon and Star Gladiator jobs. If you haven't seen that video yet, check out the link in the description below. But before we start the video, do you have problems AFK grinding in ROX? Do you always worry that you may overcharge or the battery of your phone, tablet, or laptop may overheat? Do you worry about your electricity bill when grinding using your personal computer that is running for days non-stop? Or do you encounter intermittent connection from your internet service provider which disconnects your character when AFK grinding? Well, if that is the case, then UG Phone can solve all of your problems. UG Phone is a cloud phone that runs independently in the cloud and it does not consume the memory or battery of your physical device. Even if you close the UG Phone app, your game will still continue to run in the cloud, which makes this the perfect phone for AFK grinding for 24 hours, 7 days a week non stop. Nice. You can also run multiple instances of UG Phone in one account, which allows you to play and grind multiple games simultaneously. As you can see, my Shura and Royal Guard are AFK grinding at the same time. UG Phone is available in Google Play for Android, App Store for iOS, Windows Store for PC, and you can also use a web browser to run UG Phone. So if you want to try out UG Phone, you can use my link shown in the description below. And you can also use my invitation code which really helps me out. So thank you guys and thank you UG Phone for the sponsor. Now let's get back to the video. Let's first check the skills of the Star Monarch job and go through each skill one by one. As you can see, there are a lot of new skills in this job, so I will check the skills by columns. I will start at the right column going to the left. So first, we are going to talk about the three passive kick skills, which are the Blast, Cyclone, and Atomic Kicks. These are continuation of the rising, round, and shattering kicks of the Taekwon respectively. For the blast kick, this will be triggered after the axe kick. Again, this is an AoE damage skill which can stun targets that are nearby the player. It is similar to its predecessors wherein you can increase the damage for every strength that you have, and you can gain energy based on the number of targets that you hit. Next is the cyclone kick which is also a continuation of the round kick. Same with its predecessors, this kick can regenerate your HP and it increases its damage based on your strength, as well as restoring your energy based on the number of targets that you hit. Last but not the least is the atomic kick, which is a continuation of the ignition kick. The atomic kick is a good complement to the ignition kick because if you remember, the Ignition Kick has a debuff that puts weakness to the target. Now in the Atomic Kick, once the target has 3 weakness stack, it will consume all the weakness and deals additional true damage to the target. The only setback on this skill is that it doesn't work on MVP, Mini, and Boss Monsters. However, I think this will still work in PvP. Like its predecessor, every hit that you deal can also regenerate your energy. Moving on to the final skill in the right column, which is the high jump. This is a dash skill that you can basically use to move closer or away from your opponents. You can gain endure when using this skill and at the same time increasing your final flea by 20% for 3 seconds. The weird thing for me about this skill is that it doesn't have any cooldown time. Which means that you can basically spam this skill and have unlimited dash. The only time that you can't use this skill is when the Taekwon is still in the air. I'm not sure if this was supposed to be designed this way, or maybe this will be nerfed in the future. We will just have to wait and see. Let's now move on to the middle column of the skill tree. Here, we will get a new active skill which is the counter kick. What's interesting about this kick is that you need to hold the skill to stay in the blocked stance. So basically, this skill is not for AFK grinding or PvE, but more towards PvP. When you are in a block stance, your final damage reduction will be increased by 1% for each level. And once you release the block stance, you will be launching a kick that also deals a good amount of damage in a fan-shaped area. 
Just like the other kick skills of the Taik one, the damage can also be increased by the number of strength and it can also gain the Taik one energy when hitting enemies. It also has an ultimate which can be triggered when using the Union of the Stars. When using the ultimate, the final damage reduction is increased by 25%, that is 15% more than the ordinary counter kick. At the same time, when you are able to hold the black stance for more than 3 seconds, it launches a wide range of key wave which deals a good amount of damage. One thing that I've noticed when using the ultimate counter kick is that there is a bug when holding the skill. A description interface shows up in the screen when I am holding the ultimate counter kick skill. Hopefully, this will be fixed by the devs as soon as possible. Moving on to the next two passive skills for the counter kick, which are the reflection and regen. Now these are interesting passive skills, because one can reflect the damage while in the black stance, and the other has a regen effect while taking damage. You also have to note that these two skills cannot coexist. Meaning, when you use the Reflect passive skill, you can no longer use the Regen skill and vice versa. So make sure to pick the passive skill that is more inclined with your build. For me personally, I would rather take the Regen skill over the Reflect skill because at max level, you can only deal 8% Reflect damage. But then again, it's up to you on which skill to pick. Moving on to the final column of the skill tree, which has two active and two passive skills. The first active skill is the Union of the Sun. This skill will summon the power of the sun and it will consume 10k of your own Zeni. It also has a very long duration as it will be summoned for 10 minutes. So it's basically 1k Zeni per minute for this skill. I guess that is a very good deal because Zeni is so easy to grind in this game. When you are inside the realm of the sun, you will gain an additional 10% defense and 10% physical damage. In addition to that, you can also ignore the opponent's physical defense when you meet the criteria in the skill description. The most impressive effect in this skill is that when you are inside the realm, all your kicks will now deal fire damage. It's basically having a fire converter for free when you are using this skill. The only time that the effect fades is when you leave the realm, use the union of the moon, or if your character dies in battle. Looking at this skill, I must say, the devs really put a lot of effort in this skill animation. Now going to the next active skill, which is the blessing of the sun, this skill is quite familiar especially for those who played in the OG Ragnarok games. Because this skill is basically the soul link skill of a Taekwon. When you and your party members are inside the Union of the Sun skill and the Taekwon activates the Blessing of the Sun, the other party members will be linked to the Taekwon. To know if you are linked with the Taekwon, a sun icon will be above your character's head. Once linked, the Taekwon will take 10% of the damage taken by the other party members. It's similar to the Devotion skill of the Royal Guard. The only time that the link will be broken is when a member leaves the realm or the Taekwon's HP is below 20%. Now for me personally, this skill is only good on certain situations. As well as if the Taekwon is built like a tank, because if the Taekwon who uses this skill is quite squishy, then I don't really think that this skill will be useful at all. Moving on to the Warmth of the Sun passive skill, this passive skill adds a healing effect to the Taekwon and its party members who are inside the realm. Now this is a very very useful passive skill in both PvE and PvP. If one of the member's HP is full, it will then gain a shield for 9 seconds. This is one of the better party buffs that I've seen in ROX. On to the last passive skill, which is the Anger of the Sun. This skill is basically a control skill that stuns the target for 6 seconds. Another useful skill of the Taekwon inside the Union of the Sun realm. And that's all of the skills for the Star Monarch job. I will create a separate video on the skills of the Stellar Fist. So make sure to subscribe to the channel to get notified when the video comes out. But before we end the video, I just want to say that this class has one of the best skill and battle animations in the game. 
the devs really put an effort to make sure that the skills of this class will stand out. On top of that, the skills are so useful in both PvE and PvP, especially the party buff skills. Even though I haven't completed the analysis on the Stellar Fist, I have a sense that this job will be one of the meta characters moving forward. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, and if you want to see more ROX content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. GG! You're a superhero.